Hello, hello everyone and welcome to another casting of Age of Empires 2. First things first, let me introduce the players here in the north. Playing as the Ethiopians, we have Danando, myself. And here in the red in the south, playing as the Persians, we have Gold Roger. And both of us were players in the Hidden Community Cup, organized by T90. And thank you very much, T90. It was a great event. The organization was great. But we did a deal, me and Gold Roger, during the event. We decided that if both of us made it, uh, didn't fight against each other during the tournament, we would be playing a show match against each other. So this is a play all three series. Uh, we're going to play all three matches and we did uh, draft of sieves, draft of maps, exactly like a best of three series from the Hidden Community Cup. If you want to see how the map draft went, how the sieve draft went, you can check the description down, be down below. But yeah, both of us doing our job in the in the Dark Age at the CLO 1000 to 1300 ELO. Players know how to do Dark Age openings, but um, <clears throat> we see Gold Roger was quite risky here going forward with uh, scouting with the ship, but it wasn't punished. And uh, oh, the boar hiding there, but I think it does get revealed later on. And Ethiopians versus Persians, of course, uh, two very solid sieves. Ethiopians have great archers, they have bonus of food and gold when they age up, and that can make them quite threatening for some feudal pressure, the archers fire faster, and then they have great siege in the late game. Um, <coughs> the pulling of the boar here, oh, moved a little bit too quick. And when it comes to the Persians, of course, they have faster working TCs, which, which can provide a huge benefits over time, it's one of those bonuses that's working behind the scenes. They have stronger TCs, uh, which can be used of course for the famous Persian douche, and they are great with cavalry, they can get um, the crossbow line, the archer line, only costing wood, starting from the castle age due to the unique castle tech. And here we are both scouting, both searching for for our animals, and if I remember correctly, I played this yesterday, I think I'm going to miss two sheep, yes, these sheep are quite forward, oh, and now that I noticed, <laughs> quite an unlucky scout path, this is part of, part of Age of Empires, and both of us, oh, I, I was about to comment on the adult TC time, it went up a little bit by Gold Roger, but 3 seconds versus 10 seconds, that's that's neglectable at this level, that's not significant. Ow. And we're about to see, uh, spoiler warning, we're about to see the first disaster of the match. Here I was, first looting up the board. Went great! And I'm like, what's the hotkey? Ungaris, Ungaris! Yes. That was... how much does a boar have? 340 food down the drain already. That's not the start you want for, for, for any show match. And this is panic. I don't have the boar, I didn't find this sheep. I'm like, okay, I'm going to try to push in here. I'm already scrambling, this is the first match. Playing on Arabia, I am very comfortable on Arabia, but still... Panic mode is already activated. It's like, I'm like, oh, what are the timings now? Because we practice so much the build orders and then once one element out of that domino of I do this, then I do that, once all, one element falls out of place, the entire domino effect is broken. And I'm about to be housed. Yeah, it was a really wonky start. I added some farms. At this point, I'm like, okay, keep calm, keep calm. Make things work as best as possible. It was a rough start, but usually uh, I see this a lot in my streams. It's not, uh, what makes you lose is not what you lose from the bad start, it's the mental aspect. How much you get affected from it. So at this point, I'm thinking, no, 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 get your head back into the game. This was rough, but you can win this. You've won hard games in the past, just keep going at it. Of course, Gold Roger with 20 villagers, uh, one more villager than you usually go for in feudal, but he does go for some barracks and some militia pushes. And this is what Gold Roger is famous for. Not the militia pushes in specifically, but uh, 
wonky plays, crazy plays. He likes to make the game chaotic. I've scheduled some of, I've catched some of his matches in the past. Gold Roger does like to do some wonky stuff. That's what brought him to my attention. One of my, one of the viewers in chat was like, "Oh, you need to play Gold Roger. He does very chaotic matches. Very fun player to play against." But yeah, I'm, I still haven't clicked up to to feudal. I finally found my sheep here. I was so relieved, but. I haven't clicked up to feudal and I have six farms already. Of course, those farms will result in a great economy, but the pressure is arriving. He's feudal, he clicks double beat axe. You should get double beat axe when you hit feudal right away. That was a, a good call. He almost stole my sheep there. Yeah, <laughs> not an easy start. And of course, this is my first time casting as a video. I usually stream. Those of you who are familiar with my streams know that lately, Rough starts have been kinda <laughs> kinda common. This is not a rough start, this is a normal start nowadays, unfortunately. Uh, I need to work on that. But yeah, I decided to try to produce some comment in video format, because some people look at a, a 5 hours stream and they're like, oh, I won't click that. So I decided to try and record some shorter videos. This is my first one, of course. So I'm expecting my performance to not be stellar as a caster. I need to, to train myself. To improve my my skill at casting these kinds of games but yeah i'm trying to react to everything here he missed micro the scout so that's a lot of pressure that already got reduced <coughs> uh, the quick wall there a bit wonky on my end but the villagers can fight back <coughs> now it's a lot harder to fight back because uh, they are a lot stronger uh, men at arms are a lot stronger than militia it was one villager send another one to help I lose two villagers, and now he just walks away. And yeah, Persians have great, uh, great TCs. They work faster. I have the higher idle time here in the stats, and I just lost two villagers. So six villagers behind already. This, I'm in a really rough position. But yeah, this is what I wanted to do. But. A lot sooner. I wanted to have my archery range up. I wanted. I'm playing with the Ethiopians. I'm going for some archer pressure. And here, while I'm getting pressured, while I have all of this chaos, Gold Roger just has the time of his life. Base is peaceful. I'm not a huge fan of Hello? this many on gold on feudal age. Either you are going for a very high pressure build, for example. Two or even three archery ranges, they are the most uh, uh, gold-intensive unit in the Feudal Age. But if you're not going for anything wonky, if you're going for a more standard build and even adding scouts, that's a lot of food cost, you want to have more on wood, because wood, of course wood is not food, but you can convert wood to food using farms. So at this point I would prefer these villagers to be like only three or four on gold and the rest of it on wood. I feel like the build would flow better. Because it's very important not to float resources in throughout all the game, but the sooner at the game you are, if you are in Dark Age, resources are valuable because you have few of them. If you are in Feudal Age, resources are equally valuable. So floating uh, 400 gold, I'm only cons considering the gold that's above the cost for Castle Age, at this point is rough. But yeah, and because that's one of the most important things in Feudal Age, of course, it's the pressure, it's the villager lead, but also it's all about who clicks up to castle first. Of course, players can opt to go for a, a longer Feudal Age with more, more pressure, more decks. Uh, we see Horse Caller going in, and that's usually when you go Scouts, you do get Horse Caller earlier. When you go Archers, you often only think about Horse Caller. Uh, when clicking up to castle age, but yeah, I'm the first one to click up to castle. My archers are a little bit in a bad position, and this can be a lot of damage. I'm already behind in villagers. If those scouts can start getting more and more villager kills, I will be in a rough position. Both of them escape, uh, but this is causing idle time, this is causing my... my... Uh, economy to ha be less balanced. I fight back, back with villagers. 
retreat with the uh, low HP ones. That's one thing that uh, sometimes low elo players forget, lower elo. Villagers can be very useful against this pressure. Of course, the scouts are getting more and more upgraded, but when there's no bloodlines, there's no scale barding armor, there's no uh, forging, villagers can actually do a great job against scout pressure. And Gold Roger, now his economy is starting to get... Uh, to get... A line to go to to castle age, but you did see he required to use the market and often the market is a tool that should be used for emergencies for balancing you shouldn't require the market as part of your build order so i do feel like the less villagers on gold will be best but yeah i keep a production i'm about to hit castle age oh, there's a hole there but it's not anything serious of course my since i'm ethiopians oh, the pikeman upgraded for free that's uh, uh in this specific matchup very useful bonus but gold roger with almost a thousand more resources collected than me uh, we have even military kd he killed two of my villagers uh, both of us with decent idle dc time of course it should be zero but at this elo, one minute of vital TC time at 19 minute mark, I would not complain. And we see the text, we see bloodlines, we see fletching, we see castle age, we see some archery ranges going down. So just, of course, I played this game, but looking at the text, it tells me right away, he's going for cavalry archer. I do arrive with my army for a little bit of pressure. I know I'm behind, I know I'm playing against the Persians. So I'm trying to, to search for some damage here. I could target the farm, but even just... Just a distraction, just causing this idle time. Uh, he was on the offensive and... One thing I would like to see when you're attacking, when you're putting your opponent at home, like Gold Roger did, it's that then, if your opponent is focusing on defense, it's very easy to wall off your own base. And if this was palisaded, suddenly all of this pressure would be a much would be much easier to deal with. Even if you're going for aggression, he did do a good job at managing the economy while on the aggression, but you also need to think about your defenses. And I would have loved uh, some palisades or just some house walls. I'm causing idle time. And we see the cavalry archers going out. Ow. My my pikeman did get a little bit out of the position, but he returned on time. The villagers help. We see here a small engagement. But yeah, I'm causing this idle time. I'm fighting with counter units, but yeah, now it's three knights against my crossbows. I know crossbows are gone, but I did kill two villagers. I reduced his mass. It was a small army for me, and I did buy space and time. I already have the second TC up. Uh, he's only playing on one TC. A lot of idle villagers. Still behind in villagers, but now I have a, a huge military lead. That's something also important. Always keep production. I feel like that's the thing that... Uh, that I noticed the difference when I win or lose games. One of the main key factors, of course, I do make small mistakes, I do make errors. Production is so important. Keeping up, uh, people think about not having idle TC time. These are also production buildings, the military buildings. And keeping constant unit production can make such a huge difference. Of course, there are times where you need to suspend unit production to go for a more greedy approach to the economy. But usually you want to have those, those buildings working. Because then you risk falling behind militarily and... If your opponent can punish, they will punish. And that's one thing that I'm noticing the more and more my elo goes up. If you are in a thousand elo, you can make a lot of mistakes. They're not even mistakes because they don't go punished. So if they don't go punished, you can do it. The more and more your elo climbs, every single flaw you have in your game plan, every single mistake you do, will get punished. And that's one thing I feel like any player who wants to, to improve their game plan needs to work on is minimizing their errors, identifying what's a mistake, that's also really important, what's a mistake, what's not a mistake, and uh, 
Of course, you can play Age of Empires at your own pace, not everyone is focused on improving their ELO. I enjoy the ELO climb, I enjoy this, I enjoy the challenge, so I'm really focused on, on trying to eliminate all errors I'm making. Of course, I do have more idle TC time now, but I have the 3 t idle TCs, and Gold Roger, even though he's on 1 TC only, he does do an impeccable job at maintaining that TC at work, making sure he has efficiency, but... Uh, yeah, if you're on the defensive and your opponent has 3 TCs, if those 3 TCs are pumping out villagers, you will start losing the advantage. It's so important to get the extra TCs. We see both of here, that's a, a good thing from both of us here in the top. Both of us are spending a lot of our economy, not a lot of floating resources, but the balance of workers, because of the pressure and everything, does make it so that Gold Roger has a much harder to work at producing units, at producing villagers. It's a lot harder to, to balance out uh, uh, the income, the outcome, the <coughs> managing the troops. And while my army is here in the pressure, doing the pressure, I have new units here in the back. They deal with any raid that might come. And once this is dealt with, I could move them forward right now, but I was like, no, let's use this to the maximum value. Uh, and he does take the heal, which is good for this engagement. Let's use these units to the max, and then I think of bringing another one and keep the new reinforcements back. And another thing that's very important, I at this point I feel like I'm winning the game. There's no need to rush. Often, if you rush too much, that's where you can give your opponent a window of opportunity to come back. I know I I, I don't see any TCs. Of course, they may may skip under my radar. Uh, I know I'm getting a lot of villager kills while my economy is fully safe. So at this point, I'm like, yeah, let's keep the game like this. My unit comp, unit comp the Ow. pikemen, of course, are not that efficient against. Uh, Cavalry Archer, because uh, it's hard to get them close, but the crossbowmen do a great job. And if we look at the upgrades, yeah, Bobkin Arrow, we, I have Ballistics, which as soon as I saw my opponent is mainly on Cavalry, it was a great... I thought it was a great addition to have, and it makes this raid so much easier. And yeah, at this point I've talked about, for example, the the board that I killed in the start. Now that's completely relevant. It affected me that. Imagine if that was still in my mind mentally. <coughs> that could be. And a lot of players, um, I've talked about other players uh, regarding this. A lot of players lose the games also because they try to overcompensate too much. It's one thing if you do a lot of mistakes and then you're like, okay, I need to go all in. If I played standard, I will lose. But some players feel like, I lost villagers, I lost a boar, now I need to do crazy plays. And when you try to do crazy plays, you can be punished. So sometimes, to just calm down, play standard, and uh, fall back into your own playstyle, it does help a ton. Yeah, every single wave that's dealt with, I have a new wave ready, I keep production. I do. I added some more... Some more... Uh, Archery ranges, kept adding farms. Always keep adding farms until I have a stable economy with 200 people. Doesn't matter 200 pop. Doesn't matter if you think the game is short, if the, you think the game is long. Uh, you should always have on your mind the goal of 200 villagers. 200 pop. Of course, you can go for a lot all in, and that's an exception. On standard plates, a good practice to, even if I don't eliminate my opponent with this pressure, if I, if I can't, heal, I'm not all in. I still have a good base in the back, I'm adding monastery for the relics, market because I like it, and those are important buildings to have. Here I fight using the heal to my advantage. But at this point, because of the TCs and everything, there was a point where Gold Roger could uh, cause a lot of damage, but since he reached Castle Age, he's always been on the defensive. Every time he tried to raid me, he found my reinforcements back there. And now I feel like the game is reaching a point where... <coughs> where it's impossible. I have double the economy. Of course, things could happen, but... I have double the economy, it's more balanced. World lines are a bit wonky. You should not have too many villagers on a single world line. Of course, 
Casting a game is a lot easier than playing. When you're playing, you're thinking about so many things. You're playing, thinking about your army, you're looking at the attack, you're looking at your management, and it's so much harder to maintain a good economic balance. But at the end of the day, economic balance can be converted into military lead, and if you have the military lead, you don't need to micro anymore. You can just let the units do their thing. And GG is called. So this was our first game. Of course, you see here the effects from... From unique production, a great APM by Gold Roger. Um, I do feel like, yeah, it was some balances with the economy, some things in Feudal Age that makes the game harder for you. Uh, when you do, for example, when you put 8 at gold, you won't feel that now. It's not like I put 8 at gold, now my economy is wonky. You'll feel that 5 minutes later, you'll feel that 8 minutes later. And I feel like it was this economic balance that hindered... Uh, the tech times, the military times, and since my timings were a little bit tighter, I could start getting the the pressure in, and then it was a really hard game to play for Gold Roger. But it was a really fun match, I feel like uh, it could have gone either way, this is the first one of our play all three matches, and I'll upload it now, and probably later this week I'll be uploading the second match. Thank you very much, and I'll see you then.